Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of season eight of Gather for Her. I'm Tina O. Oh, I'm your moderator, and I'm grateful to be connecting with you all here from Nequelequam, also known as Bowen Island in BC, Canada, on the soil originally named as Turtle Island, now known as the continent of North America. I'm grateful to rest my head, to play, and to co-create on the traditional unceded and ancestral territories, land, and home of the Squamish people. Gather for Her invites you to be part of this co-created conversation with global leaders, change makers, and social impactors, and it's brought to you by Powerhouse and is produced by Regen Media. At Powerhouse, we walk beside leaders to amplify their change work as they walk their path of whole leadership, guided by conscious leadership practices and Indigenous ways of knowing and being. Our impact producer is Regen Media, who invites us to take the power of media into our own hands by supporting stories that heal, regenerate, uplift, and transform. We're here every two weeks, live here on LinkedIn, followed by a private interactive wisdom circle held on the leader path, which is at Powerhouse is our virtual fire. But I'll tell you more about that later. I am going to pop in a few times during this recording to introduce you to different things we have available for leaders like you who are ready to elevate and decolonize their leadership by walking an integrated path of Indigenous ways of knowing and being. So because this is a live conversation, we would love it if you would introduce yourself as a listener or viewer in the chat. Um, say hello. Let us know where you're connecting in from uh, with an acknowledgement of gratitude for the lands in which you rest, play, and grow. And know that you might, you might be new to that, and that's cool. We invite your learning there. So let's begin. I'm going to pass over to my sisters in change making and let them introduce themselves. And then we'll introduce our special guest for you today. So over to you, Shar, to, to kick us off and start us. Thanks, Tina. It's my pleasure to welcome you this morning. I am hosting you from my home on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Squamish First Nations here on the beautiful Sunshine Coast on the west coast of Canada. And it is my absolute pleasure to gather with you this morning and to gather with another very special guest, another change maker. Um, I'm going to pass it over to you, Sharon, and, um, and, and thank you for, for co-hosting this morning. Thanks, Char. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Sharon Marshall, and I am just super excited to be um, a co-host on the, uh, this uh, special um, um, hour of uh, conversation with uh, change makers. And and um, I am uh, coming to you from the um, uh, from Lanceville, which is um, in between um, Sananu and Sanawas First Nations. And I'm just thrilled to be here. And I will pass it on to um, our other co-host, Christina. Thank you, Sharon. Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Christina Venti, and I love nothing more than gathering with uh, with with new friends and also with longtime friends. This uh, this practice of gathering is always so rich and meaningful to me. So I, when I'm not traipsing around Turtle Island, you can find me in the Rocky Mountains in Golden, BC, which is also the traditional territory of the Tanaha and the Shuswap peoples and the Columbia River Métis. So welcome to all of you and uh, curious where this conversation is going to be taking us. Yeah, always, always curious. Um, Char, as the founder of Powerhouse, would you introduce the awesome Monica Jiang for us? With pleasure. I'd like to tell you just a little bit about Monica when she was just 27 years old. She grew into her first leadership position within the House of Beautiful Business and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that special house. It was a very non-traditional path and that she walked and is still walking as she's expanded into uh, th this path of leadership and growing into leadership through mimicking, reflecting, trusting her intuition 
and drawing from her more experienced colleagues and community members. And boy, isn't that a big part of co-creating and co-learning and leadership. Monica is bringing together storytelling, uh, meaningful experience design, world sentiment, and current events, and holds space for a balance of autonomy, self-responsibility, and soft guidance uh, through sensing the other. And she's currently recalibrating her own relation to work and contribution through her role at the house, her volunteering and community work, as well as personal growth. Wow, it's just such a pleasure to welcome you this morning. I really look forward to the conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Now, Monica, I know you a little bit, so I'm just going to add a little little pieces uh, to your, your introduction. So with House of Beautiful Business, I was introduced to the house um, three years ago now, and I remember sitting in a room with uh, Randall and Marilyn, and we were talking about mystery. And, and we weren't even talking about the House of Beautiful Business yet, but it was that conversation of mystery. And Randall looked at me and he said, you know what? I really think you need to meet Monica and Tim at the House of Beautiful Business. And that was my introduction to the house. And it was through this word of mystery. And as I walked beside the house a little bit for the last three years, being a part of the chambers that we've done here or, or the different um, satellites, I'm going to call them that, um, it's been such a learning experience for me. And the watching you do the way that you host, watching you host, and the light that you bring to the community that the house is, uh, has been a great teacher for me and a, a great, um, I want to say, inspiration of hope for me. And I, I would love to open us um, with, uh, with what we, how would you introduce us? To the house. To me, it's the word mystery, but I suspect for you, it's beautiful. How would you introduce us to your work with the House of Beautiful Business? Thank you so much, uh, first of all, for, for your words. Um, yeah, introducing to the House of Beautiful Business. Uh, mystery is a good one. Uh, yes, for sure. It's one of the uh, core principles. I could name a few others. Um, serendipity, uh, unknowingness, <laughs> and um, probably also something around controversy and um, friction uh, and tender dissent. Mm, the house is is an idea and is a is a space that lives, I like to say, between the the minds and the hearts of people all around the world. Um, and it manifests itself in gatherings and experiences that we're creating, whether they're online. Uh, on, on any uh, platforms or in person where we bring together ideas and, and people who usually maybe don't come together and uh, we explore, I think, through the lens of business, that is always the, the, the lens, um, different uh, and maybe also more positive uh, visions for the future of, of business and humanity and tech and society at large. And uh, we're trying to do this through conversation and through shaping a different kind of narrative um, that is not business as usual, but business that is beautiful, that can be beautiful, and also through experiences and, and making people feel, uh, feel more and truer, I think. And um, that, is, that is really what, we're, what we are doing and constantly evolving, I think, also what the idea of beautiful business means in the context of now and um, the future. And uh, it's an invitation, I think, to, you know, to co-create that, to use your um, language, language um, and to constantly evolve and reflect as well as, um, as we're going, as we're growing as well. Um, so the house was founded 2017, started as a gathering, organically grew to a community uh, exactly through people like you and and others who were like hmm, don't know exactly like what it is but it kind of feels right and it feels aligned and let's just do something wherever we are right now and that's sort of how it came to came to be and now it's a membership-based uh, organization yeah 
I'm going to go ahead, Sharon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks. I just want to jump in because I'm super curious. Um, um, it's so the house of beautiful business is such a, an amazing idea, but it's so untraditional. It's so out there, you know, compared to normal uh, ways of doing business. And you're so young to, to jump into this. Um, uh, I think your bio said that you grew into this first leadership role. So my curiosity is around you grasping the idea of the house of beautiful business and running with it as a leader. And like that takes a lot of vulnerability and a lot of like, I think another part of your um, bio said that you uh, were following you, you're trusting your intuition. So for a young woman to trust your intuition so, so faithfully in something so different um, because we don't typically do business this way um, and, and you're bringing in all the, all the different senses. It's more of a, an holistic way of doing business. I guess I'm just curious, um, how, how did you, um, how did you, are, are you follow? it's your intuition. Like, are you following, um, oh, try, I can't spit it out what I'm trying to ask. <laughs> um, oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> It's just on the tip of my tongue. What, um, I guess, just with your vulnerability, what attracted you to this and and, and what keeps you going and, 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 and believing in yourself that mm. this is, uh, this is the way you want to, this is what you want to do in the world? Yeah. Thank you for this question. Uh, I think, um, you know, how I came to the house, um, that came from a place of frustration and of like, disenchantment uh, and uh, sort of, you know, realizing, being confronted with the reality uh, uh, as a like 20 something uh, year old student, um, making her way into the world of, of business and, and thinking <laughs> in her mind that, you know, this is going to be like fabulous. I mean, this is where it starts. Like, finally, I can start with work. I don't want to study anymore. It's like so theoretical. I just want to do things. And <laughs> I, uh, I grew up with a very, um, I would say, more like traditional conservative mindset of also, you know, my understanding of productivity and, and work and the, and the value uh, that you get from it. So, uh, I was quite excited about it and then so disenchanted by how rigid and how flawed and inefficient in a way um, mm -hmm. the, the, this whole world seemed to me as, you know, an intern or a student just coming into the system, just trying to make sense of how things work, how decisions are being made, how people are being kept busy to create something that is then you know, thrown it in the trash and like over overruled by someone who sits obviously in a higher position for some reason that I could not really uh, understand. Um, and just being very naive, uh, you know, and, and just being really, uh, um, yeah, shocked uh, in a way and, and confronting then my colleagues back then, like, how does this, I mean, is this normal? <laughs> like, this is how, it, how things go in big corporate uh, organizations and in others as well. Um, do you question still why you're sitting here and what we're doing here and what purpose this serves um, or, or not really? Um, and that, you know, led me um, eventually to, to the House of Beautiful Business through a very also lucky um, uh, encounter and, and coincidence um, with... Uh, with my then you know former former job at SoulWorks, which is a purpose driven, um, one of the first purpose driven um, consultancies here in, in Germany, led by a woman, uh, by Julia von Winterfeld, who was already you know very much ahead of her time with mindfulness and conscious leadership, and I mean even the word purpose it was was not one that was you know very um common here in that context and that's how i came to the house with this um sense of okay there there is something more she already showed me through her path and through the work that we've done that there, there are so many constructive new ways how you can rethink and you can take this frustration into something that is constructive that is nurturing uh and even if you cannot make sense right what it 
exactly is that you are looking for, um, you can try to contribute to it. Um, and I think that's what I um, felt um, when I first met her um, in terms of, you know, what you asked about intuition. It's like mm, something is different here um, and it feels good. It feels great. Um, I feel seen. Um, and that, you know, the, the energy is somehow right. And then coming to the house, being there as an attendee first, I think gave me the, the privilege, you know, of sitting there in this room full of incredibly um, brave and visionary um, and different people, like weird people <laughs> to the best, in the best sense, right? Um, where I was sitting there like, why, why do I get to be here? Like, I, I am the luckiest, luckiest, luckiest girl on this planet to be here and just to listen and to absorb. And I cannot even make sense. I don't even know what this is. I don't even understand half of it because my mind is just not that fast. You know, I'm just that, I don't have all of that um, experience and knowledge, and, but it, it resonates. It resonates so much. So um, then a year after, uh, it took me another year because um, I did some freelance work and just explored and was like, oh, let's see, uh, came to the house again. And then I worked there as a freelancer. Um, so I was kind of half in. And then at that 2018 gathering, uh, I, I still very distinctively remember that I was like standing somewhere, you know, in, in this house. Um, and uh, I thought, this is it this is it like this is um these are exactly the the kinds of people that i want to surround myself with and the ideas that are radical and unusual um and at the same time positive like they carry something that is constructive uh, in, a, in a sense right and, and optimistic um and yeah that's that's how i came to to the house and also how it, it kind of reconfirmed more and more and still something that I'm learning to trust um, my first instinct, like the first instinct uh, don't even, you know, I don't even think about it, but it's just like, oh yeah, I already felt, you know, drawn to this. So I, I should go. So thank you for that. I just wanted to add, um, so you're using your, in, in, you're trusting in your intuition more as you get older, trusting in, in and it's your guiding post then, it's your guiding light. Is that yes. See? Yeah, I, I think so. Also in in other aspects of, of life, right? Relationships and um, just like, is the timing right for this decision? And it's still very hard. I think this constant battle of mm, post-rationalizing as well, right? When your mind is like, are you sure that you're really feeling this? Because <laughs> I think <laughs> this and that. And you're like, no, but so sensing into my body as well, uh, noticing, for example, this year, uh, that, that has been something that I've been exploring a lot. Is like, I, I am most myself if I'm like really in my body and I don't think <laughs> that much. <laughs> Um, because I do think a lot uh, all, all the time and it's just like very busy right in my mind so um, yeah that's that's been something uh, to to look out for these uh, places like when I can dance when I can be in my body um, th those are the those are the places <laughs> thank you Monica I'm going to pass to Christina in a moment but um, if you're just joining us here on LinkedIn what you've just landed into is a gather for her conversation. It's a co-created conversation and we're so glad that you're here. Every two weeks, gather for her is live here on LinkedIn, followed by a private interactive wisdom circle because as you're listening, there's going to be concepts here that you want to know more about and we're going to unpack those in our wisdom circle, which happens on the leader path, our leadership gym, and it's designed to accelerate your resilience restore your well-being and amplify your impact as you practice decolonized leadership and learning what it means to you to be a good ancestor and make decisions through a seven generational lens. So let's go back to our conversation with our guest, Monica Jang of the House of Beautiful Business, which you can learn more about at houseofbeautifulbusiness.com. Um, and I'm going to pass to you, Christina, because my guess is there's something on your tongue just waiting to happen. <laughs> 
Well, there's so many things. <laughs> actually, there, there's so many things, but actually I want to hone in on one of the things that, that Monica just talked about. And, and that is, um, is, is the role of our, like our, our overthink, overthinking mind versus connecting to, um, to our body and into, in, on our intuition. And my guess is the listeners are struggling with this. They struggle. They're all leaders who, again, it, pr- know. It's like we, we talk about this a lot. We know we're supposed to be in our body. We know that, that we can't connect, disconnect our head from our heart. Like we know this. And yet um, our default is to be overthinkers and to be in our head and to rationalize, like you said, well, because that's, again, that's a very colonialized way of thinking is just to rationalize our, ourselves right out of, <laughs> out of our intuition. And so this really connects to what we're talking about this season around whole leadership, that, that idea of, of, again, having our, our intuition, our, our body and those signals um, deeply connected to, you know, to, to our, to our minds. And, and so when, where does that take you in terms of whole leadership and what are the ways that you cultivate your intuition and, of and, and maybe um, what are the ways that you, maybe you could tell us a story about how do you, how do you stop yourself from overthinking? Hmm. I, I think I'm also very much a doer. <laughs> so um, I think, but I also do. And sometimes if I start to, or if I catch myself, um, you know, overthinking too much and like theorizing about something or like getting into this rabbit hole and sometimes can get, can, can get also really negative or like dark, um, where I'm like, I, I actually don't want to go there. <laughs> um, or I, I don't have the, you know, I just don't have the capacity right now and it doesn't feel like the right place. Um, I start to do something. Usually that helps me to either really get into my body and do yoga or, um, go dancing or something like that. Um, that always helps. It just always helps. Um, or, uh, I start to write it down so I start to write um and and not in the sense of like I'm going to write now this incredible (laughs) story and like this amazing opinion piece that um, everyone has to read it's more like no I'm just trying to journal and just get it out of my head so that the thoughts are put on paper and I can read them and I can read back on them and at least that's that's then there right or of course if um it is really something that uh, that constantly is there. I do reach out to um, to people in my life that I can have a conversation about. So um, that that for sure. Uh, and I think that's what I mean by doing something. Um, it is a little bit of a maybe distraction uh, <laughs> technique in that sense for me. Um, but that's that's at least what what helps me usually. Awesome. Thank you. I, I actually want to just challenge the listeners right now and and uh, think about those things yourself as a listener. Think about what Monica just said about writing and dancing and playing and stretching and and reaching out to others. What are the things that that actually connect you into your intuition? Think about that. Think about that question as it relates to whole leadership. So I just want the listeners to, to think about that. That's, and one, one of the things I, I, I want to say, Monica, and we often say this at Powerhouse, is like, these things are actually really simple, but there is an uncommon discipline required to leave the, if I just power through by thinking, mm. And, and actually entering into our bodies to, to, to do. I love that you said doing. So thank you for that. Thank you. I, I want to ask a, a question that's not on anything we prepared you for. So I apologize. And I totally don't apologize at all. Um, you used a word distraction. And I loved it. I was like, wow, we're talking about distracting 
what I call the border collie in our brain. If you ever had a border collie, you know what I mean? It's like, they just need to herd something. Like they just need to go do something. But we need to distract the thinking, the border collie in our mind in order to get into our body. And I'm like, oh, that's healthy distraction. Wow. Uh, and what a radical thought that we're, that, that our operating system has been the thing that we have to distract. It's like, yeah, we do. Um, but I think my question or my, my question is around what are you noticing around in, in, um, around ADHD, frankly, you know, we hear that uh, and, and neurodiverse, um, and, and cause I'm, I'm like, who there's healthy distraction. Is there such thing as unhealthy distraction? I wonder, I don't know. Uh, and I'm curious what your noticings are as a leader, um, around fragmented ways of what I might call fragmented may not be fragmented, but ways of moving through the world, going in this healthy versus unhealthy distraction. Let's just mm -hmm. open up there. And where does that go? Yeah. Yeah. I think it, um, very interesting, healthy distractions, which, uh, connects, I guess, very much to attention, right. And our inability, almost increasing inability to be present and to hold an attention more for, you know, for more than like three seconds. And I'm very much a, uh, not a victim because I do this to myself, <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I get so easily distracted and my attention span is, is very, very short. I can, I can sense that. And I think that is something that I'm noticing. Um, and that is, you know, talking about leadership so required, I think, to try to practice the ability to hold <laughs> and to hold this presence and to actually keep listening even if your mind is going into that thing and you're seeing that email that pops up and your phone or your dog or whatever you know it's like so things are happening like just to hold the attention that you have and that you owe to the other person who is talking to you directly or indirectly um and i think to to practice this this way of going deeper again and into these nuances and not to be satisfied with the superficiality of, oh, yeah, yeah, I hear what you say, right? Like, I, I know, I know where you're going. I don't have to hear, you know, the, the rest of the sentence or, um, you know, I, I distract myself by like multitasking. I'm such a multitasker um, <laughs> by multitasking because I think I can, you know, be productive at the same time. And that like helps everyone like, no, actually that is, really really wrong so um that just came to mind when you we talked about distractions and healthy distractions um and how yeah i think important and how difficult it really is uh to just have and hold a conversation for you know now like what is it, like 28 minutes um and not do something else or have your mind in the back of your head go and and, and solve try to solve a problem. <laughs> I I'd love to tag on to just for a minute and then I'm going to I'm going to pull us in a slightly different direction. Um, my comment around having and holding attention and absolutely expecting distractions, right? So if we were in a yoga pose we would just hold that pose mm -hmm. and there would be distractions, right? And so I think for people listening, when we're, you know, when we're in the world that we're living in 2022, it's not a matter of if there's going to be distractions, there absolutely is. But can you just practice and notice, oh, there's a distraction and um, keep holding the pose, keep holding the pose. And our pose is presence, right? That's the muscle that we're rebuilding. Um, we have a choice if we want to follow the distraction like a goldfish or, you know, but um, so, yeah, I, I tend to learn everything through my body, always have, always will. Um, but where I'd love to jump, it just, if, if you wouldn't mind, is actually around the value of um, modeling possibility. I'd like to revisit the, the story of the woman who was uh, a pioneer in the purpose 
um, space um, because I think that one of the one of the biggest gifts that we can give to emerging leaders that are coming up after us is to bottle possibility. Um, I had a very special mentor who um, is no longer in this world in a physical way. And she, she raised $300 million and um, she to, to shift and transform the energy sector. And she absolutely modeled to me to not put limits on what I thought was possible. And um, I'm curious if in the house of beautiful business, there is um, talk and energy around um, more deliberately role modeling uh, as well as intergenerational business. I read a stat recently, I think there's more generations in business right now than ever. I think there's seven, if I'm not mistaken, there's seven generations, uh, seven different age groups um, right now, just before the boomers um, uh, set to retire. There's the most span of age groups ever. So I think there's, there's really something here as we're exploring how to elevate and ascend um, business and leadership in business around, we've thrown around role modeling and mentoring and sponsoring and la 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 la. But what's the real conversation we need to have now? Um, curious where that takes you when you think back to the seeds planted by, uh, by that purpose mentor and role model. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's so, it was so, and still is, is so vital, uh, I think, to, um, to have these, these people in your life who, who are, yes, in, indeed role modeling. And that is also what, what I meant by mimicking, because I thought like, mm, yeah, when, you know, I, Tim and Till were like, the founders of the house were like, okay, this is, you know, this is your team now, <laughs> in a sense. It was not like that, but a little bit like this. I was like, okay, um, I guess I'm just gonna, you know, follow my intuition and try to mimic what you are doing or what I see from other colleagues. Um, and in that sense, I that, that is how I still learn uh, all the time and progress. And to me, I, I'm very in a very lucky position to, you know, not only work in a team, uh, of uh, incredible people who are, by the way, um, both, you know, older on one side, but also younger, like most of my team is, is much younger than me. And I learned so much from them. Um, not only, you know, in, in the sense of um, the actual skill or like what they know or how they gather information, how they learn, uh, but more so through the interaction and the way that they see the world, of course and hold me accountable to things and, you know, pose critical questions uh, that are very, just come from a very honest, raw place. Um, and I, I absolutely value that. And then beyond, of course, within the House of Beautiful Business, I think we're also seeing now with the growth of the community, um, still very small, but growing, um, that we are indeed bringing more and more different age groups together. So currently we don't offer anything concrete uh, around like intergenerational exchange, but that's certainly something that we um, are exploring and discussing because I think that's definitely apart from, you know, this intersectional and like um, uh, diverse um, and, and interdisciplinary way of bringing people together, which has always been at the core of the house, like business leaders, mainly artists and scientists, um, is also this interesting uh, way of, okay, could we bring together a CEO with an intern and, you know, someone, it's like a middle manager or something, um, or, uh, you know, a professional uh, dancer, choreographer, or someone from, from different industries, doesn't always have to be business, in order to, um, yeah, also bridge this gap of, the conversations that are to be had and that are often lost because the space might not be there. Um, not that the interest is not there uh, or that both either sides are like, oh no, you're too young. What are you going to know about this? Or like, oh no, you're too old. You're not, you're not following, you know, you cannot even catch up because 
whatever. I, I don't believe that that is true. I think that's a facade and maybe in some, some instances, yes. Um, but that also comes from a place of just being insecure, you know, if, uh, maybe I'm, you know, not, not enough or I, I cannot be as, I have that uh, all of the time. Like I cannot be as eloquent. I cannot be as, not as smart. Yeah. How, how do I measure up? Um, but once you are being given the space where that is being acknowledged <laughs> and it's absolutely okay to not to know or not to be, mm -hmm, uh, I think that can be, yeah, very fruitful uh, to create this, this exchange. Yes. Mm, thank you for that. You just reminded me of when my son, my youngest son was a baby and he was, he's always been very socially ahead. Um, so he was an infant, you know, he didn't have a lot of words, but he had lots of responses and, you know, they, they just talk, they just talk and talk and talk mm -hmm. and you don't even know what they're talking about. And I used to go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And one day he stopped me and he went like, mm-hmm. No, mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. he knew exactly where I was and how not present I was. And there's pieces that were, that you're bringing up here that, you know, it's like when we tap into our body, it's beyond, as we were talking about in a previous conversation, it's beyond words. There's a communication happening. And I just wonder how much of our own mm -hmm we're doing. Oof. Okay, I'm going to reset the room and then I have a question for you. Um, if you have just jumped into this wonderful conversation, this beautiful conversation, um, we have about another 15, 20 minutes to go. So just know you can rewind and catch up with us. Um, this is Gather for Her, a co-created co conversation with global leaders and change makers and social impactors brought to you by Powerhouse and produced by Regen Media. And we're here every two weeks um, here on LinkedIn, followed by a private wisdom circle where you are invited to join in and help us unpack some of the things that are waking up probably inside of you as you're, as you're listening. Uh, at Powerhouse, we're always taking steps to decolonize leadership by being in practice of whole leadership. And that means decision-making at the speed of your whole person or your whole leader. It's in your thinking, it's in your doing, it's in your mental health and your physical health and your energetic health. It's what we call the three R's. So if you're an employer or an HR person, that's resilience and retention and restoration. That's probably what you're interested in. And if you're the change maker listening to this, we're talking about renewal and rest and remembering all that you are. And at Powerhouse, we've created a program called First Steps, which is all about this. Um, we have a lot here available for you at Powerhouse, and we're so happy to be learning from Monica Jang tonight, this morning rather, um, tonight for her, because she's in Lisbon, um, from the House of Beautiful Business. So let's go back into co-creating together in this conversation. And Monica, one of the things that, uh, I don't know if you've heard me say this, but certainly the braid of us, Sharon and Christine and Shar, have heard me go on and on and on about this, that I really think that this is the age of the artist. We are in the age of the artist mm -hmm. because what artists know how to do is solve problems when they're, when they have, to, when there's no sense making, there, it's just not there. We know how to create something out of nothing. And uh, one of the things I love about the house is that art is part of the ingredients of making business beautiful. And I would love to hear you speak to or around art and whole leadership and just how does art factor in uh, to the house and what would you invite us into? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think more, more than ever, um, I think it becomes very apparent uh, in, in moments of, of crisis and darkness and like so much struggle, um, where do you turn to? <laughs> You, you turn to art, you turn to culture. It's like what when we think about, you know, in 2020, what what we miss so much. Yes, of course, the social connections, but also beauty <laughs> and theater and music and, and how people are singing. Right. And I think this that's that's at the essence of of it all in, in the sense. And that's also where I think the house of beautiful business and the idea of beautiful business and how Tim 
um, my colleague and a co-founder of the house um, wrote it in his book, The Business Romantic, um, is that creating and making beauty, right, is the is the purpose of of all of this and and how it's so necessary to to bring that back into business or to weave it together again um, anew. So last year at our um, a main gathering uh, that was called Concrete Love, uh, and we hosted it in, in Lisbon and online. So it was like a hybrid um, gathering of the course of four, five days. Uh, we had one particular session that is still very much in my mind, um, hosted by John Michael Shirt, um, who's a choreographer and um, with his together with his partner as a dancer uh, created a, a movement choreography collective choreography session around leadership uh, in uncertain times so it was called moving through uncertainty and that was probably one of the most um beautiful beautiful moments uh during that main gathering where people were left uh, you know incredibly moved um because in the way that he was able to both convey this idea of everyone is able, you know, to, of, of art making, not everyone maybe is an, is an artist, but art making, everyone can do, um, and how important it is as a, as a leader to sense that and to navigate through art making and through moving through these different um, and difficult times. Um, and, and combining that with movement and the body and embodiment uh, was just quite extraordinary. So these are the types of things that we do at the house. It's not that someone just stands on stage and gives their talk and clicks through their slides and like, I'm done. I'm going to fly back to my home now. But it's like there is a stage and now, OK, there's someone coming. There is live music. Someone is dancing. Someone is talking. The audience is being brought in, you know, as like, collaborators of this choreography so just to give a give a sense maybe um on how ideas can be conveyed and transcend uh in in a different way when when art is at the at the core thank you i'm curious christina from a systems lens where that may take you I, I don't know if it's taking me anywhere from a system slits, but what I, of course, I'm thinking about, I'm actually thinking about government, because that's where, that's where I, I work. And so, mm -hmm. and, and I'm thinking about how, again, we get into, um, because it's conference season right now, and I'm traveling around speaking at a lot of conferences, and it's like, oh, we're doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> and, and I actually wrote down here, just if you'll indulge me the garage of gorgeous government <laughs> and and how the the importance of taking a risk right mm -hmm. and um, and how that risk creates tension and i'm actually going to go back to something you said at the beginning that i almost like i got emotional while you were talking is um, tenderly held tension because this is it, it's hard work and there's and there is this again this contrast between words like business beautiful oh christina you're you're cutting out <laughs> ah! Um, As we're talking about <laughs> friction and holding. Well, let's let's pick up on contrast because that was oh there she's back. You back there? Yeah. Business, you were this business. Beautiful. <laughs> Over to you. <laughs> so the contrast of, of 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 both business and beauty, and we think it's in contrast. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to have tension, but it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be polarizing. But yes. also the, like, the, the, the contrast of art and science that can be held in tension, but it doesn't have to be polarizing. It doesn't have to be opposites. It, can't, it doesn't have to be either or. It can be both and. Same with the head and the heart. 
right? It doesn't have to be either or. It can be, it can be both and. And so these are very, that's, it, it's the wholeness that encompasses the, the contrast. Can I just jump in for and a sec? So, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> I think there's a bit of a lag there because I thought you were, <laughs> were done. <laughs> Sorry, Christina. Um, I'll let you finish. No, okay. I just wanted to jump in because you, you said the contrast between arts and science. And, and I just finished reading or listening to the audiobook of um, The Fuzzy and the Techie. And, and that comes to mind because, you know, it used to be, and probably it might still be that um, uh, people that were after a liberal arts degree were poo-pooed on by the science, the people that were going into science and, and, and vice versa. Um, and yet we can't, you know, in, in today's age, the, uh, the House of Beautiful Business, that's exactly what we're talking about, right? We're marrying the two to make something even more beautiful. And you can't have one without the other in, in this, this, this is an age of the digital, this is the digital age, but it's also like uh, Tina said, the age of the artist. And so um, it just makes um, life more beautiful. And that tension does, does um, not need to be negative at all. Yeah, and so the invitation I think is to, it, it, is to refuse the either or thinking. Mm -hmm and to hold the both and thinking. Absolutely. I think that's that's very right. That's also something um, that I'm thinking about, like this non-binary thinking. And I mean, on a identity level, that's that's very interesting as well, right? On a personal identity. But that, that how can we convey this like multiplicity as I was thinking about what you wrote me right with these these questions around whole leadership i was like that that's that's it for me like how can you hold this multiplicity of everything that you are and everything you are not and <laughs> create also the space for others to be that and how can organizations um you know hold this tension uh and 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 this purpose profit uh thing um and how can we do you know our inner work and and uh you know get into our bodies and and practice presence absolutely while also being out there in the world and conscious of uh our privilege and conscious of of all of the you know conflicts and all of the issues that are out there in the world that need solving and then not only solving for the purpose of let's come up with a solution so we can you know check the mark um, but that we can evolve in a, in a way that is regenerative and, and nurturing and, and that, that weaves together these different um, no, forms of knowing, which I think is, is very much your work also about, right, how, how you bring that together. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's, that's the, the age of the, the non-binary and like the spectrum, um, which is... I think so, so needed uh, and, and feels, feels like the right direction. Yeah. Mm, age of the spectrum. I love <laughs> that. Wow. Um, we're just on our last 12 minutes or so. And so if you've just joined us, rewind and watch the rest of it. Um, this is an amplification conversation. What I mean by that in the house and powerhouse, it's seven generational, but, uh, it's a seven generational conversation. It's amplification of the inside of us as leaders and the amplification of that inside on the outside of us to all of you. And we're here with Monica Jang of the House of Beautiful Business, a change maker and social impactor in, in Lisbon. And um, we're so grateful to be with you. In our last 10 minutes, I want to pass to you, Monica, what like what is really alive for you in around whole leadership or what questions came up when we gave these questions to you that you would like to jump into in these last 10 minutes and we'll close together in that place. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I thought very much about um, like how I personally, like how I show up for the other, um, the other being my colleagues and the team, of course, but 
Absolutely. Also the House of Beautiful Business community, um, a residence, and then, you know, beyond the, the work environment, also everyone else. Um, so I think whole leadership um, in that sense also means for, for me to, to show up with the full range of um, full range of emotions um, and the, you know, the, the ability to say, uh, yes, I am a you know, courageous person and I, uh, I in, in most instances, I know what I want. And at the same time, I have no clue. <laughs> and I, um, you know, I have the same fears that you probably have. And um, I, I don't have an answer uh, to, to all of the things. And that might sound so simple, but I think it's still... Um, yeah, it's still a, a, a difficult thing or stigmatized. You know, if we talk about leadership and the, the image that most of us probably have, at least I do, of leadership and, and leading um, uh, is very di directional in a way and feels very much you know, aligned with power and in, in the, the sense of hard power. So what I'm trying to say is like, you know, what came up to me is like, how can I, uh, embrace a softer way of holding this power and and guiding um and being being there you know emotionally and at the same time giving people this energy for them to to thrive and to step into whatever is you know next for them and what they need to to progress in in their careers and professionally because it does give us a lot of um meaning i mean businesses are just uh meaning makers <laughs> So uh, that is maybe something that I uh, that came up for me, and I think on a on a bigger scale, um, whole leadership uh, I think is also very much this consciousness of the responsibility as a as a citizen uh, in a in a social context in a political context. Um, so I'm actually based in, in Berlin, in, in Germany, and not in, not in Lisbon. And, and the, these past uh, months, uh, because of the, the war in Ukraine, have been very impactful in a sense um, on uh, you know, my, my awareness, I think, of myself <laughs> and of you know, my, my place in this world and my role um, talking about leadership not only in the sense of like, this is where we're going and I'm going to guide this team, but also in the sense of showing up when it's needed and also keep showing up <laughs> for whatever, you know, you can give and how you can support and where you can be in, in people's lives who are maybe strangers. Um, uh, but, to, but to hold on to that and, and to be aware that, beyond our roles as you know leaders in the work context it also matters what you obviously do outside of that and how you show up in a you know volunteering capacity or in 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 a capacity of having conversations with your colleagues about that because you know that they're struggling with it because of personal reasons or whatever um is i think really crucial uh, going forward um, because there are so many, so many issues and we cannot afford, uh, I think as, as leaders or just people in business uh, to say, oh, it, it, you know, that's, it's, it's too political or, you know, that, that's too, that's too whatever. <laughs> um, it, it's just not, not right. And it's too easy, uh, I think, to, to close your eyes um, before things that, that, that actually really, really matter much more than, you know, whether or not I, uh, the, this beauty shot newsletter is now the best beauty shot, beauty shot newsletter of this month or, um, or not, because I can do, redo it and do it better next week. So, um, yeah. I think those are beautiful words to close the conversation part of this. And I would love to, I, I looks like Christina's dropped off on the, on the Wi-Fi waves of what happens out there. So I, um, I'll make sure that she has an opportunity to share with you what she's taking away, but we usually do just a circle of what we're leaving with, um, from this session. And for me, I'm leaving with, uh, what you just said 
gave some information to me when you dropped the word privilege earlier, or maybe it's Christina, but like I was struck by, we have a, we have the privilege of even talking about whole leadership and that in itself is a privilege and reminding us of the war in Ukraine um, was important for me to hear today. So I'm leaving with a deeper understanding in my experience of privilege this morning and beauty in that. So thank you. And I'll pass to you, Sharon. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, those were great reminders, um, Monica. So thank you for that. Um, and I, I'm leaving with so much, but the, the few things that um, come to mind right now are um, uh, to surround myself with um, uh, people that I admire, um, to trust in my intuition, and to show up and keep showing up. Thank you. Oh, thank you for the conversation, Monica. I, I hope we can have many more. Um, to be honest, what I'm leaving with today is as a global citizen, um, I really believe that radical transformation requires uncommon discipline and it requires commitment. And I really heard you say the difference between when you were half in to the house of beautiful business and when you were ready to commit to it. So as a global citizen, I hold tension between um, frustration around commitment and, and as a founder of a house building community for change makers in whole leadership, um, holding patience, understanding, timing, empathy, compassion, that everyone moves at their own pace. And uh, it's an interesting place to play. And so that's, uh, that's what I'm taking today. And I'm just taking that honesty and holding that tension. Thank you so much. Thank you, all of you, really. <laughs> and what are you leaving with today, Monica? What's present for you? I want to give you space for that too. Thank you. Yeah. Um, gratitude. Gratitude. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I, I am very grateful. And I really try to remind myself um, because, you know, when this this feeling that I had like 2017 when stepping into this house, sitting there uh, in between all of these amazing people um, is is this exact feeling like, how do I even deserve this? This is just mm -hmm full-on gratitude and I'm going to receive it uh, and I'm trying to you know give it back um, for sure wh whatever I can do so I'm very grateful for this and, and for your um, yeah for, for your conversation with um, with me um, yeah it really resonates hmm. well thank you we're glad you're here mm -hmm. Uh, though for our listeners, you can find out more about Monica and Tim and the crew at House of Beautiful Business at houseofbeautifulbusiness.com. There are lots of ways to get involved with them. They are, they sound to, you sound to me like a bridge organization, much like we are. And these communities exist for you to step forward in the world in the way that feels whole to you. Um, we're going to close and uh, just want to let you know that Powerhouse um, Gather for Her is hosted by Powerhouse, where we walk beside leaders to amplify their change work and integrate Indigenous ways of knowing and being on their path to whole leadership. You've just been part of a co-created conversation, and this conversation has been recorded. You're going to watch it here on LinkedIn, but you can also find it again on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, and on Spotify, where it's been repurposed into a podcast called The How for Her Many thanks to our Impact Media producer and sister company, Regen Media, who reminds us that we can take the power of media into our own, our own hands when we support stories that heal and regenerate, uplift, and transform. Thank you to the hands at our back, uh, Powerhouse and Regen's digital storytellers, Zoe Gray, Madeline Archibald, and Willow Smith. Thank you to my co-hosts and sisters in change, the braid of Powerhouse, Charlene, Christina, Sharon, and of course me. And to you, our listeners, our community of change makers, our leaders and social impactors, thank you for walking with us in co-creation of the world we are living into together. 
You're always welcome here each week on Gather for Her in whatever awkwardness you're living into, whatever awesomeness you're living into. And there's always a place for you at our fire here in Powerhouse. Much love to everyone. Thank you for being with us. And we will see you in two weeks here on LinkedIn. Thanks, everybody. And thank you, Monica. Thank you. <laughs>